They say everything's bigger in Texas, and the Rockets have sure taken that to heart as one of the NBA's most larger-than-life teams. Big stars, big trades, big numbers stuffing the box score, big talk, some big failures. Really, the only thing that hasn't been big recently is their lineup, which was so small it made, well, big news. So it's not a surprise to see the Rockets mark this offseason with one of the league's biggest shakeups. In a two-week stretch, they've replaced both the head of their front office, Daryl Morey, and their head coach, Mike D'Antoni, two of the sport's more notable experienced names. Stepping into their places, new GM Raphael Stone, and now, according to our Adrian Wojnarowski, Steven Silas. Personally, I think this is a great hire. Silas is simply as qualified as it is possible to be as a first-time head coach. He comes straight from a job as the Mavericks' lead assistant. He's the man that Luka Doncic credits with helping his jump into hyperspace this past season as Dallas put together the best offensive rating in NBA history. Silas, in fact, has two decades of experience working with some of the sport's top names. He's also an Ivy League graduate who, thanks to his dad, Paul Silas, has spent his entire life around the game and just has an extreme ease with players and management alike. It doesn't surprise me at all to hear that James Harden and Russell Westbrook both back Silas for this hire. And honestly, those are the relationships I will be watching most closely. Harden is locked into the Rockets for just two more seasons. His happiness over this next year with Silas, and to a different degree with Stone, will probably go a long way into determining his future with a franchise that itself is already in as much of a win-now position as it is possible to be, having already pre-mortgaged a lot of its assets. All of which is to say, yeah, the stakes are very high with this latest Houston shakeup. We won't know for a while if this is a great new beginning for the Rockets or the beginning of the end of an era, but either way, we know it's big, as usual. <laughs> so, Perk, do you think Silas is a good fit in Houston? Is this the beginning of something there? Yes, I love it. I think it's a great high. Steven Silas, to me, is a possible air exposure in the making. This guy's a stud, a young stud. Like you said, he served over 20 years as an assistant. Uh, he's a magician with the clipboard when it comes down to drawing up offensive sets and putting guys in position to be successful, especially Russell Westbrook and James Harden. And if you look at the feedback that he was a getting that he was getting across the internet, guys like Baron Davis and so forth were saying, great high, this is a great dude. He gravitates to players on and off the court. I love the hire, and not only for short term, but for long term. I could see him being the Rockets coach for the next six to eight years possible, even if James Harden and Russell Westbrook are long and gone away. So I think this is a great hire. I'm so happy for him. He's a young stud in the making and is well-deserved. Yeah, no, Rachel, every year when uh, head coaching jobs are open, we hear about, oh, I can't believe so-and-so hasn't gotten a chance yet. They've been an assistant for four years. This is an <laughs> outrage. And I always think of Steven Silas. This guy's been an assistant coach in the NBA for damn near half his life. Yep. And his name never gets mentioned. Like Perk said, extremely mm -hmm. well-respected for his attention to detail, for his preparation, for his mastery of the X's and O's, particularly on the offensive end. But the other thing, and I think this is important in today's NBA, players <laughs> like him. The days of, oh, I don't care if my players like me, they're going to respect me, that's over. This is a player's league, and you have to have some sort of mutual respect and understanding and likability to be successful because they got to listen to you. And Steven Silas is a guy universally, and this is a guy who's coaching Golden State, he's coached Steph Curry, mm -hmm. he's coached in Orlando with Steve Clifford, he's coached obviously in Dallas with Rick Carlisle in Charlotte. He's been around. He's known, he's a known commodity, and I'm happy that he finally got his chance here. And by the way, and you guys, Perk, I know you know this, usually when we're talking about a first-time head coach, you're getting a lottery team. Yep. You're getting somebody, who, uh, <laughs> a team that's kind no of stars. exactly expected to win 20 <laughs> games or something like that. This is a rare opportunity for him to walk in the door and have two Hall of Famers on his roster. Absolutely. And, and the distinction you make about being a player's coach, it's actually a little more nuanced, right? Because, no, you cannot be the it's my way or the highway mm -hmm. anymore in this league. 
But it is a balance. You have to be a coach mm -hmm. that has the respect and comfort of the players while still having authority with them because players don't respect a guy they can walk all over. Right. So I think it's actually a harder needle to thread than we sometimes give it credit for. And by all accounts, by people who have played for him, he does it. He threads that needle. So that is really impressive, too. And I do like the fact that Westbrook and Harden seem to be behind this move because... I mean, we've talked about guys making a noise, certainly in the bubble, about, hey, there aren't enough black head coaches. No, there aren't enough black executives. Why aren't we doing more business with black-owned businesses? Well, this was a case where two stars had the opportunity to put their money where their mouth was, and they backed the young black assistant coach yeah. for the job. Absolutely. Which was impressive to me. And, and, and by the way, it, it's, kudos to the Rockets for listening, right? I, I believe, you know, the question was, oh, should they have taken input? Hell yeah, they should take input. When you have star players, that's the way this league works. And if you don't take their input, you better be prepared for some sort of uh, kind of friction to happen mm -hmm. walking through the door. So instead of that, you got him coming in. Now, the other candidate was John mm -hmm. Lucas, who'd already been there and obviously lives in Houston. He's been there a long time and was well-respected and well-liked by the players. So I would expect to see John Lucas continue on on the staff. But, you know, when you talk about some of the other options that are out there, I think it's important to listen to your players. And again, it's not about kowtowing or doing whatever they like, but it's about coming to an understanding that this decision is a group decision. It's not a unilateral decision from the owner. And I know that they want to keep uh, John Lucas on the staff and are just hoping that they can convince him too, Perk. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.